Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Imagine being so entitled to think a complete stranger owes you to move their car, inconveniencing themselves so you could have a parking spot. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Actually met a Karen out in the wild today. Newcastle, UK, the RVI car park to be precise. She was searching for a space to park her unnecessarily large 4x4 in the multi-story car park. A woman was walking back to her car, so the Karen stopped on a ramp in the car park to wait for the woman to get in her car and drive away so she could have the space. Karen stopped right in the middle of the ramp, not over to the side, not in a safe and convenient place, no, right in the middle of the flow of cars so nothing could move. All of a sudden, I sat in a queue of three to four cars going nowhere because Karen. Except the woman wasn't leaving. She was just going back to her car to retrieve a bag. Karen didn't like that. She felt that the space was now hers by right, so she gets out of said 4x4 to berate the woman and force her to move. Woman was having none of it and told her to F off, which sent Karen up a notch. By this time, there were 8 to 10 cars waiting for Karen and the horns were blaring, at which point Karen went nuclear and started yelling at everyone. Hold on, I want to speak to the manager. Do you know who I am? Hissy fit. So, stand off. Karen's not moving. Traffic stuck, and if you know the RVI car park, you can back up onto the surrounding streets. After about five minutes, the car park security turn up to see what's happening. Presumably, they've seen where the blockage is on the CCTV, so security get both barrels from Karen as well. The woman with the car makes it very clear she isn't moving, the words stupid C are used, and walks away out of the car park, Karen's left standing having a fit about a car park space that doesn't exist. With a flick of her bouffant, she storms back to the 4x4, pulls faces at the queue of cars, and has a few final choice words for security, and peels off up the ramp to find another space to declare her sovereign property. What a B. I think security should have told her and her attitude problem to leave. And our second story. An expensive 84 cents. This all took place yesterday in a local pizza place. I have a friend working and I went to visit, got a delicious pizza and was sitting very close to the register where I could talk to him behind the counter. So I'm just enjoying my pizza and an order comes through online. The guys working make it and go back to having conversation. A few minutes go by and a young girl, maybe 17, walks in and says, I ordered a pizza. I'm here to pay and pick it up. Take note, I used to work for this store and I know how all the transactions are handled, so I'm pretty attentive to how they do things nowadays. My friend directs her that a prompt will show up on the terminal asking if she'd like to leave one. The transaction is continued and all is well. Minutes go by and your average middle-aged soccer mom with the young girl from before comes storming into the store with her card in hand yelling for the highest manager they have before she even makes it two steps into the store. She quickly makes her anger felt throughout the whole store for she has felt betrayed because the workers must have wrote a tip on the card because she gets emails instantly from her bank and it was more than 837. The manager goes through the order and expenses, indicating that she hit the 10% tip button, adding an 84 cent tip onto the card. The woman was furious, insisting that the employee had tried to trick her daughter into tipping because the daughter said she didn't tip. At this point, I could have intervened and explained that I was here to witness the daughter ask how to tip, but I could tell the woman was volatile, so I didn't want to bring her wrath against me. But it just wasn't my place. The employees at this point apologized and handled the situation in a calm manner and offered a cash refund for the tip. The woman, still screaming, explains that the 84 cents has cost her account to overdraft. Sounds like she couldn't afford the pizza in the first place. She proceeds to tell the manager working that she wanted the transaction to be voided and she'll pay the initial total without tip. The manager explains that the void won't put money back in her account for one to three business days and the woman insists that her bank will process the funds immediately and to do it anyways. So he obliges and voids the initial payment and processes the exact same payment from before, and the mother can clearly see the tip prompt that her daughter used. 
The mother's satisfied but still angry, so she lets the employee know that she would never expect a business to run this way and that she runs a business and she knows what she's talking about. Her business must not be doing very well according to her card funds. She grabs her daughter's wrist and walks out of the store right after yelling, I will never step foot in this establishment again. The manager, my friend, and myself all look at each other with the exact same facial expressions. We all let out a good laugh because we all know how crazy customers can be. Moments later, the woman swearing she'll never step foot in there again stormed back in, saying she got overdrafted for a second time despite not listening to the manager's warning. She demanded for the owner's number and then left for good. And our next story. Only six items per bill. I used to work as a server in a restaurant. Part of the job, hopefully, obviously, was to tell the kitchen about the food customers have ordered. We did this by ringing in the order on the till, which would cause a bill to print out in the kitchen. A problem came up sometimes with larger tables. The bills that printed out with so many food items would, after hung up in the appropriate place in the kitchen, get in the way of the chef as he was trying to organize everything. It was perfectly reasonable to initiate some change in processes to prevent this. Since you read the title of this thread, you already know what this change was. No more than six items per bill. So if you had a table with more than six people, you had to ring in some of their food, then stop, then ring in the rest as if they were a new table. Honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was easy to do. One day I had a table of six. They all ordered steaks. I happened to find myself in the kitchen area after I rang in their order, and I noticed a bill getting in the way. It was mine. I had a bit of an aha moment. When I rang in a steak, I had to include how it was done, which side they wanted, and which salad. Each of those specifications added an additional line to the bill. I thought back to the motivation behind the six items per bill rule, and from that point forward, I decided to cut my bills off even earlier when they were full of steaks. No one ever mentioned it, but I felt good about myself because I was making my coworkers' lives easier. Sometime later, I was sat with a table of seven. They all ordered pasta. Pasta, when I ring them in, only occupy a single line each on the bill printed out in the kitchen, I did some quick analysis and realized that many of the bills I'd sent back with only three steaks were longer than a bill with seven pastas, so I didn't bother to split up these seven items onto separate bills. Chef lost his crap. He stormed up front and yelled in my face about the six item per bill policy with an earshot of customers to boot. He crumpled up the bill, threw it at my feet, and refused to make any of the food. I had to track down a manager to delete the order in the system, then ring it in again. A little while later, I was sat with another table of seven. The first guest ordered a steak, so did the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The final guest ordered a pasta. Even after the crap storm I'd recently put up with, my instinct was still to ring in three steaks and the pasta, send it, then ring in the other three steaks separately because that would have been the most convenient for chef. But the malicious compliance got the better of me. I rang in those six steaks, hit send, and included the single line of pasta all on its own separately. The bill with the six steaks was more than twice as long as the one with seven pastas that caused all the ruckus. Chef came out and asked me if I could split things up more evenly next time. I looked him right in the eye and said to him, I'm sorry, Chef. I'm not smart enough to figure out how to split things up to make them the same length. I can only count to six and start another bill. The manager pulled me aside later that day and chuckled with me about it. He asked me not to do it again, but he chuckled with me. I didn't need to do it again, though. I'd made my point. Chef didn't complain the next time I sent back seven pastas on a single bill. And our last story. Bought HOA's planned park from tax office. I flip and build houses in Texas. I've been acquiring lots for future builds and buying three to four here and there. A month ago, I stumbled across a county's appraisal district's unpaid taxes properties. Their list is over 10 pages long, mostly mobile home sites. I drive by each lot and decide to buy 30 plus of them. One ends up being three acres and was the planned HOA park. HOA fizzled out. No one paid HOA due since. The property tax has been unpaid for 10 years. The county took possession four years ago and no one bought it, so I took the risk and dropped 5 k into it, another 2 k in survey. Before today, I've spent five minutes on the land. No one was there. 
Today, I had free time and cruised out there. Ends up being an old man with his 1970s crappy teardrop camper. No electricity or water, an 80s model Chevy S10 truck. Trash bags everywhere, pots, pans, and just a mess. I politely asked him if he had permission to be camping here. He mentioned it was owned by the HOA. I explained they'd failed to pay taxes for 10 years and I now own it. He argued and I drove away calling the sheriff. Advised by sheriff to write a handwritten 30-day eviction notice, he packed and left, I think. While this is happening, another dude rides in on a dirt bike with a fishing pole to fish the back acreage. I leave him alone and go home an hour away. Sheriff advised to install a gate and no trespassing signs. Tonight, I bought signs and built a huge steel 20-foot gate. I'll install it tomorrow. Update. When I put up that gate, there were a number of angry people there. I hired a real estate attorney to review my plans and situation. They determined the Texas law that allows property owner to buy back starts the day the deed first changed, which was more than two years ago to the county's trustee. After six months, two years is up, and there's no possibility of previous owner buyback. This particular county will not put property up for bid until after they hold it for two years. In Texas, after a sale, the previous owner had six months to buy back property with no structure, two years for property with structure, or was homestead. So this week, I'll install the gate, cameras, and no trespassing signs. I hired a sanitary inspector to determine where to put a septic system, survey to mark corners, and will start letting the community know it's no longer HOA property, which it hasn't been for more than two years. This is great because I bought more than 30 other lots with the same situation in this area within the past few months and placed bids on 10 more yesterday. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.